The opinions expressed in the following program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect those of Rogers or Rogers TV. Welcome to Health Matters. I'm your host, Dr. Lana Marconi. Tonight, we will explore various aspects of traditional Chinese medicine. I'm super excited for this show. But first, I want to reveal the results of last week's poll question that asks, what sort of therapies are you most likely to use when it comes to managing your health? A, natural. B, chemical, or C, a combination of both. By natural therapies, we meant herbal medicines, CAM services, and meditation, for example. By chemical therapies, we meant non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. And the results showed that 78% of the people polled chose natural therapies, while 11% of the people polled chose um, chemical therapies, and 11% of the people polled chose both therapies. So thank you very much for your participation. I really appreciate it. And I have a new poll question for you, and it's related to tonight's show. When it comes to traditional Chinese medicine, for example, acupuncture, moxibustion, tuina, qigong, are you open to trying it at least once? Let us know yes or no at rogerstv.com slash health matters. And now, my guest. To my far left, I have acupuncturist Stephanie Chung and her wonderful um, model this evening, aromatherapist Lisa Bushrow. Welcome, ladies. Thank you, Dr. Thank Lana. You. Thank you, Dr. Lana. <laughs> Stephanie, last time you were on the show with me, uh, mm -hmm. Last year, you came on, talked about acupuncture, and you needled my arm because yes. we were talking about pain management for acupuncture and headaches, and I really enjoyed that treatment, and I really wish it was me tonight being the recipient of the facial <laughs> acupuncture because I love facial <laughs> acupuncture, but the host can't talk with needles in her face. <laughs> so, so Lisa has willingly um, decided to do this. Thank you very much. So why don't we get into the procedure sure. of facial acupuncture and take us through it, what it looks like, and then we'll ask you questions okay. as we go along. Well, okay, first of all, usually before we begin our cosmetic acupuncture session, we do do a full health assessment just to see if there's any underlying imbalances that we need to address that are related to skin issues. Okay. okay after that, then we look at the different um, cosmetic issues that need to be addressed. For example, are there wrinkles, fine lines, sagging skin, that sort of thing. Okay, so for Lisa here, we're just going to focus on a few of the wrinkles we see on the forehead, a few around the eyes here, a little bit of the puffy skin under the eyes, and then the, the fine wrinkles around the lips here, okay? So usually with the needles that we use for cosmetic acupuncture, they are a little bit smaller than your normal body acupuncture needles. I can see that. Mm -hmm. They're smaller and shorter, mainly because the skin around the face and eyes, for example, is very sensitive um, compared to the rest of the body. And so we do need to use more smaller needles. Um, and because you are using a lot more needles on around the face, mm -hmm. so you can't use too big of the needles. And, and the diameter or the width of the needle is also smaller as opposed yes. to if you were going to needle on the body as well? Yes. They're okay. smaller, shorter, thinner, everything. Okay. So right now you're needling her... So I'm just targeting the fine lines yep. directly. So if you can see closely, I would the needles are exactly in the wrinkles. And I notice um, by her mouth, the needle's pointing upwards. So yes. why is that? Generally, most of the needles are pointing upwards mm -hmm. um, or along the wrinkles. Okay. And that helps to bring the chi or the energy uh -huh. to the wrinkles to help fill out the wrinkles and to lift the skin. And that's mm -hmm. why we point it upwards. Okay. So what's the theory behind cosmetic acupuncture? OK. Sorry. OK, so the theory here is we want to increase circulation to the skin, to the face. Um, and that means not only energy and blood, but also nutrients and oxygen. Um, that helps to help um, even out the skin tone, bring more color and nourish the face. Um, and that helps to lift the whole skin of the face. Um, and it also helps to induce collagen production. Mm -hmm. um, collagen is what gives your skin that elasticity and the youthfulness and the glow. So we want to increase that production in the skin naturally. Mm -hmm. um, and also what the needles are, it is creating a micro, micro trauma, um, which just means that that will induce your skin, your body to want to heal itself, right? And so that healing helps regenerate skin cells and also helps um, the muscle fibers just to come together. 
and also it helps to release tension in the muscles of the face. Um, so prolonged, for example, stress, you know, maybe it causes your muscles to tense up. Um, and over a long period of time, that can create the fine lines um, you might see like around the forehead here, right, or around the eyes. And so the acupuncture needles help to relieve that tension. How many treatments does a person need to see results? Or are the results immediate? Um, it depends on each person, again, depending on how old they are and uh, the conditions we're treating. Um, but generally, after about five or six treatments, you might start to notice significant results. Um, but I do recommend at least a course of nine to 10 treatments, mm -hmm. two or three times a week, just to help really accelerate the process. And how long are the treatments? My treatments are an hour and a half. Okay. And so, Lisa, because I know when I've had this done, I'm not sitting because it goes against gravity. Yes. So I, I would say that the best type of chair would be a zero gravity chair to lie in. Um, and I also noticed from my own experience that, because I was testing it with an acupuncturist, <laughs> when I had half my face needled and the rest, the other half I didn't, I could actually feel this side lifting up. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and this side was just, yes. so it was an imbalance. <laughs> So Lisa, you might be feeling that after <laughs> <laughs> So why would a person want to do facial acupuncture as opposed to, let's say, um, a chemical filler or uh, surgery? Cosmetic acupuncture mm -hmm. is all natural and it's safe. Um, there's no injections involved, no chemicals involved. Um, so, and it's targeting your body's natural ability for self-healing. Mm -hmm. um, and also there's no recovery time after treatments. So mm -hmm. once you've had your treatment, you know, you can continue on with your day. Mm -hmm. And some, wh what would be the side effect? There's not many side effects. Um, the only side effects people might feel are maybe a bit of lightheadedness after yeah. treatment. Um, and there might be slight okay. bruising because it is penetrating the skin. Wonderful. We have a caller on the phone. Why don't we take the call and sure. well, how about you take the needles out so sure. we can talk to Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> Karen, I, is it Karen on the phone? Hi there. Hi, how are you? I'm good, thanks. Um, I just had a quick question in sure. regards to uh, what about menopause? Is there anything that you can do with acupuncture that would um, sort of alleviate or um, help with hot flashes? Yep, so with menopause, we have to look at your full health condition. So um, menopause is usually some sort of imbalance in the body, and so we have to do a comprehensive consultation with you to really figure out what areas of your body and health need to be issued, uh, targeted. Okay. What are the questions I should ask an acupuncturist? Um, because, you know, we know there's fraud out there too, right? And um, I'm not familiar with this very much, like it's new to me. So what would I ask, what would I look for in terms of um, making sure that I don't get with someone who doesn't know what they're doing? Actually, can I answer that? Yes. Um, acupuncture is actually becoming regulated as a, a health professional, so all acupuncturists now have to be licensed, and we're going to actually address that issue uh, coming up later on in the show. So um, stay tuned for that answer. Thank you very much. Thank you. You're welcome. What were your sensations? Well, you know what? I, I feel uh, my skin is plumping up, <laughs> and I also feel like one side is tightening up, so hopefully you can do the rest after sure. the other time. <laughs> and you know what? It was pain-free. I didn't feel anything. I didn't even flinch. It felt really good. It was okay. excellent. And, okay, so you work at, you have your own spa. Yes, I Where do. you do facials. Absolutely. So what would a person do naturally to prep their skin before cosmetic acupuncture and then after the acupuncture? Uh, prior to getting an acupuncture treatment, it's very important to have clean skin. Uh, and we'd like to go all natural, obviously, right? I'm an aromatherapist, so I mm -hmm. like to use all natural products. So I would just use a basic cleanser to cleanse the skin because you want to agitate it. And then also just a witch hazel. Witch hazel is... Uh, Excellent, and it's just a, a basic topical, and it's as natural as you can get, and you can find it in any drugstore. And you just use your cotton pad and apply that to the skin, and then go visit your traditional Chinese medicine acupuncturist, and uh, she will apply the needles. Nice. Um, I love acupuncture. I can't <laughs> say enough about it. I was watching a BBC documentary just came out, The Science of Acupuncture, and one of the things I love about acupuncture is the diverse applications of it in terms of treatment. This lady, she was a patient, and she was um, getting open heart surgery. So instead of going for the general anesthesia, she went for the acupuncture. So they were needling you know, her yin meridians and other meridians, and they um, attached it to uh, electricity, so it was electrical acupuncture. Mm -hmm. Within minutes, she went numb. She could hear the surgery, 
hear everything, like the bones being, you know, <laughs> manipulated and everything. But she couldn't feel anything for two hours, and they even stopped her heart. Afterwards, when she explained, um, when she explained it, she said, "Yeah, it didn't feel anything." And when she went to go pay, because they showed her with her wad of money going to go pay, like days later, um, it was one third the price of general anesthesia. So it was a great, great documentary on BBC, The Science of Acupuncture. There's so many diverse applications of it. But just getting back to the facial part, from a TCM perspective, um, what can people do to maintain a healthy appearance? Because it takes two to tango, yes. you know? Mm -hmm. um, well, that really depends on your lifestyle habits at home. Um, and we really stress in TCM eating to your body type, right? So when you Consult with your traditional Chinese medicine practitioner. They will explain to you and discuss with you what's your body type and what should you be avoiding in terms of eating or what you should include maybe. Um, so for example, if you're more of a heat type person, mm -hmm. they might um, tell you to focus a little bit more on cooling foods just to balance that heat and cold temperature in your body. So that's one of the things that it's... And colors of food are important too, yeah, right? Yeah, so a variety of colors, so like green, red, blue, white, uh, the whole spectrum of colors is kind of brings the balance of everything in terms of all the organs, but also energy. Sure. And how about skin types? Because we have, we have oily, we have dry, we have sensitive. Yes. So, so. is this applicable to yep. anybody in any age? Yep. Cosmetic acupuncture is great for any skin types. Um, and that's the great thing about Chinese medicine acupuncture is because it works with your body type. So if, for example, you have oily skin, yes, we can do the cosmetic acupuncture, but we also do the body acupuncture to help balance it out, so to decrease the oiliness of your skin, for mm -hmm. example. Um, and for cosmetic acupuncture, I recommend, you know, even anyone from their 30s and on, they can start ac uh, cosmetic acupuncture. And I know on the face, too, in acupuncture and Chinese medicine, the face is a microcosm, right, yes. of the body. So when you're actually needle, well, maybe you can explain this part. When you're needling, you're also affecting the organs. Yes. So if someone has, let's say, acne, you know, I mean, how does that play out? Yeah. So the points on the uh, areas on the skin, um, on the face, they represent different organs. So for example, the tip of the nose often reflects the spleen. Um, and the cheeks represent the liver. So depending on where, we, let's say you have redness on the cheeks, it could indicate maybe a liver issue. And then if we uh, needle that area, we can also be treating your liver issue. Nice. And you've been doing this for a long time, haven't you? Yes, I love it. <laughs> I love the acupuncture. It, makes it gives you a nice good. glow, yes, doesn't it? Yes, it makes you feel good. It's like having a facelift you, like, you without had a, surgery, right? Yeah. And I'm sure you teach people to do like a face massage after so that people can touch their own acupuncture points to stimulate the collagen. Yes, for sure. Nice. Mm -hmm. Thank you, ladies, so much. You're going to stick around with yes. me. We're going to talk about Chinese herbs. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you so much. We'll be much. back more on TCM on Health Matters. Thank you. Welcome back to Health Matters. I'm exploring various aspects of traditional Chinese medicine tonight on Health Matters. And I have a poll question for you. When it comes to TCM, such as acupuncture, moxibustion, tweena massage, are you open to trying it at least once? Let us know, yes or no, rogerstv.com slash health matters. And now, my next guest. <laughs> well, hi, Steph, you're back. <laughs> with me now is Lee Su Hackett. Lee, you were on the show last year with me. You are a, a registered massage therapist. That's right. But you also practice acupuncture. That's right. And you two are both colleagues. Right. OK. So um, you're going to explain Chinese herbs. That's right. So today I brought in an array of herbs. So I'm going to talk about a few of the herbs. and. Um, what we wanted to discuss is herbs that we can actually utilize to steep teas with. And I've also bought a sample with us today that we'll get to taste a little bit later. So the first uh, few herbs that I want to discuss are herbs that's going to actually tonify the body, regulate the body's processes, and help the body's immune system. 
But again, before consumption of any of these herbs, it's always best to uh, consult your traditional Chinese medicine doctor prior to use, okay? So I know you're going to ask me what do you mean by tonifying sure, herbs? Because you, our viewers don't know, what does tonifying mean? Uh, that's right. So in this regard, what we're doing, they're sometimes called tonics. And what we use these herbs for is to supplement an inefficiency or um, something that may be lacking in the body. Okay, okay. so we're going to want to be able to bring on the, the processes to help function better and harmonize the body as well. So here, what we've got, the first herb here, this one here is um, ginseng, okay? So we've got the dried form here. So we've got various types of ginseng. There's the uh, cultivated as well as wild. So different ones, they have different qualities. The ones in the Jilin province in China are the best. I'll tell you a little story about the ginseng here. The roots are normally dug up in the autumn. Mm -hmm. They're cultivated for six to seven years, and then they're cleaned, dried in the sun, and then steamed and baked and cut into pieces. Now here you can compare the quality and even the size of the fresh one. You can actually take a... This one's the fresh one? Yeah, that's the yeah. fresh one, and this one here is the dried one. So now what we normally use the ginseng for, it's a lot of people say it's uh, great to help strengthen the body, restore the vitality it as well. A, it has a pungent. It, there is, you know what, there's a sweet and slightly bitter taste mm -hmm. to it as well. So a lot of times we use it in soups, in teas, a lot of people use them in tonics to help boost their immune system, also give them energy as well. So it's great for revitalizing and uh, so forth. It helps to tonify the blood and also encourage the blood flow. So that's a great one. We often use it in a lot of the herbal remedies that we do use and even in elderly to help boost their energy level as mm -hmm. well. And what type of ginseng was this again? This one's an Ontario ginseng From here. Ontario. Okay, That's right. There's a multitude of different types Absolutely. of ginseng. For example, um, Siberian ginseng and research shows that it actually helps to reduce fatigue. That's right. Um, and Asian ginseng, I know, um, uh, research in the International Journal of Impotence Research <laughs> shows mm -hmm. that Asian ginseng helps to increase your libido and help, uh, helps to maintain an erection in men with erectile dysfunction. So ginseng has a wide range of uh, herbal applications, right, depending on what type of ginseng we're talking about. Yeah, that's, that's uh, very interesting, but definitely lots of different uses for all of the different herbs and the different quality of the ginseng yeah. as well. So here we're just uh, speaking of the one type. So definitely uh, all of the, what you have mentioned is definitely enabled and helped by that particular herb as well. So the next one here I've got, okay, this one is shanyao. It's a Chinese wild yam, commonly known as the snake gourd. A uh, Latin name is Dioscorea. As you can feel, I'll let you take a look at that one. Very chalky oh, in terms chalky. of the nature of it. Not very much aroma to that particular one. It's, uh, again, it's to help tonify the energy within the body, what we call is the chi. Do you eat this raw? You wouldn't want to eat that one raw. I brought you a fresh one of what it actually looks like when you want to look for it in the, in the, the supermarket. supermarket I, right. mean, I love to smell food. So, so this one has <laughs> not been, it hasn't, yeah, absolutely. It, it hasn't been processed. It's still got the skin on it. It's got yeah. these little hairy little bits on the skin as well. I love this particular uh, herb itself. It's used as a food grade. Mm -hmm. I steam it and I eat it. It's great to help tonify the stomach, the spleen, if you got issues with digestion, it doesn't block or obstruct it mm -hmm. either. So it's an excellent overall neutral harmonizing herb to use. So, so far these two herbs people can get at the grocery store? Yes. Are, uh, is there any like disclaimer with that? These, this one's very, very safe for everybody to use actually. So it's great. Anything that's gonna help tonify the middle section of your body is gonna help with digestive disorders. It's got a bit of a stringent quality as well mm -hmm. because of the chalkiness in here, okay? So again, people with vaginal discharge as well, if you're experiencing any of that, taking this even on a, a weekly basis will ex actually help decrease the effects of that as well. Um, I also want to mention it does help moisten the skin as well. So you guys were talking about the segment oh, before. Absolutely, so that's why we use it and that's why we love it. So the last one I'm going to talk about here this one is the Chinese red date, okay? So very uh, different from the fresh version. I, I wasn't able to get my hands on a fresh date, but they come in different colors. As you know, mm -hmm. there's the red one as well as the black one. This one is very good. It's nice and sweet, okay? Again, it tonifies the energy as well as the blood. 
it helps to generate the fluids within the body. So I've actually cut up a sliver there oh, for you. So, so we can yeah, I actually would like love I would love for you to it. taste one. It's quite sweet, nourishing as well. So I can eat this. It's Stephanie's favorite, actually. Is it? I it is. Love <laughs> dates. She absolutely loves dates. So you can actually smell that, and it's got almost. A hint of a medicinal, yeah. very sweet, it does when I smell sweet it. Yeah. aroma as well. Yeah. yeah, you can go ahead and I, taste I, that. I read somewhere that these red dates are called the king of nuts. Is that so? Yeah, because they're high in nutritional value, and they, apparently they have um, at least 70% more vitamin C than grapes and apples. I, so they're highly regarded it. in China. I wouldn't doubt that. It's yeah. it's great to help harmonize the harsh properties of the other herbs that we yeah. uh, often utilize. Uh, some of the herbs may be very bitter that we use, so therefore this one is a good conjunction additive to that as well. It helps to restore the body's uh, balance and the harmony as well and the protective chi. So it's a great one to use. Nice, fantastic. What else mm -hmm. do we have? Well, here we have <laughs> rosebuds. Um, rosebuds is, is great to use as just a normal um, tea. You can just throw a few in a pot and just let it steep for a few minutes and drink mm -hmm. it as a tea. It's great for regulating chi and blood of, in your body. And it's usually used for um, disorders where you might have a stagnation. Um, stagnation meaning like something's just not moving as smoothly as it should be. Um, either blood stagnation or chi stagnation. Um, and for example, if women with a lot of premenstrual pain, mm -hmm. um, they can drink uh, rosebud tea and just help relieve some of that pain during the menstruation. And also, um, it helps to harmonize the liver and the spleen and the stomach. Um, so as an, just an everyday health drink, just to keep your organs in balance and your energies in balance, that's a great herb to try. Okay, and then the next one we have, um, these two that I'm going to mention next are for nourishing the blood. And when we say nourishing the blood, we're really talking about nourishing and supporting the organs that are involved with producing blood. So in Chinese medicine, that's the liver, the spleen, and the mm -hmm. heart. Um, and this one is goji berries. Um, this one is commonly found in a lot of Asian supermarkets now. Um, and it's great for the liver and the kidneys. Um, and it helps to nourish the blood also and helps... Can I see that? Yes. I love goji berries. And this one helps to sharpen vision, actually. Yeah. So for people who experience maybe blurry vision um, or any liver and kidney disorders such as vertigo, um, lumbago, soreness of the knees, that sort of thing, they can incorporate goji berries into their diets. Um, one of the things that I love about goji berries is that they're so high in antioxidants. Yes. There's something called the ORAC uh, test that was created by the U.S. Department of Agriculture and I believe in conjunction with Tufts University. And what they did is they measured the um, antioxidant potential mm -hmm. um, from uh, vegetables to fruits to essential oils. And goji berry is the highest in terms of fruits and uh, vegetables. It's uh, antioxidant power of 18,500 when compared to blueberries is 2,200 and vegetables is lower. Whereas essential oils like your rose, if that was an oil, that'd be in the millions. So, and antioxidants are so great for the body because they help to destroy the free radicals, mm -hmm. which help us to, free radicals are responsible for faster aging, mm -hmm. cellular damage. Um, so this is um, a great, um, anti-aging, going back to our beauty mm -hmm. segment, a great anti-aging uh, product to eat. Mm -hmm, so sure. would you recommend people eat goji berries you know, every day? Yeah, it's pretty safe to eat every day. Um, yeah. Just you know, grab a handful or maybe throw some in your tea and let it steep and just drink it with your tea. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, great to time. help enhance your immune system. Mm -hmm. and, and, and for people who um, you know, have addictions like smoking, um, who are always uh, destroying their free radicals, I mean, this is a great, great product. You know, sure. well, first, well, first you should quit smoking, but if you <laughs> don't, at least try to enhance your immune system yes. somehow. Yes, right. for sure. Yeah. yeah, thanks, Stephanie. What else do you have? Yeah, so this one we have is called the Longan Fruit. Um, and this is a dried version. We, there is also the fresh versions that you can find in the Asian supermarkets yeah. when it's in season. Um, this is a sweet, slightly it's warm herb. Sweet. Yeah, it is sweet. <laughs> you can actually um, taste one. Yeah. Yes, you can it's eat actually one. actually quite yummy. Is um, it? Mm -hmm. It helps okay. to nourish the blood, but also to help nourish the heart and the spleen. So for any um, conditions that are related to those organs, for example, insomnia, forgetfulness, um, dizziness, that's a great herb to add into your diet as well. Is this the cousin to the lychee? It's similar. Yeah. Yes. This is like similar. the poor brother, they call it. <laughs> 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 Just because 
way it looks. <laughs> but with many, many mm, health benefits. Uh, yes, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. absolutely. Okay, That's what great. else do you have? And the final one we have, this <laughs> is dried chrysanthemum. Okay, and this, again, is great for oh, wow, look at um, that. making into a tea. Um, and this herb is actually in the category of herbs that expel the exterior. And so what that means is it's... Very dry. Yes, that's the dried version. Um, and th what that means is that this herb helps to relieve acute symptoms of the common cold, um, especially when it's more heat symptoms. Mm -hmm. So for example, um, sore throat, um, dryness, uh, fever or redness of the eyes, that's a great herb to incorporate during that time when you're suffering from those conditions. Um, so this one actually, combined with goji berries, are often commonly eaten together as a tea. Ah. Yeah. And it's great for um, vision. So, you know, something like me. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, so Lee has uh, actually prepared for us oh, sweet. a tea where she used goji berries, red dates, um, chrysanthemum, and the longan fruit. Well, how about we have a toast? Mm -hmm. And I feel like I'm at a potluck here, a Chinese potluck. And I should have brought some fortune cookies. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to, but... Uh, Next time. Anyways. Cheers. Thank you thank so you, much. Cheers. Thank, thank you, you so much for coming on the show today and educating us. Um, you're going to stay with me. Mm -hmm. We're going to say goodbye to you. And we'll be back more on TCM on Health Matters. Cheers. <laughs>
uh, manual therapy where we use um, hands to treat uh, muscles, joints, skin, uh, bones. And he has uh, several submodalities, medical acupressure, uh, Chinese medical massage, um, joint and bone manipulation therapy, and internal organ manipulation therapy. Okay. Explain, I guess, what I'm wanting to hear is the theory behind it. Um, and how it's different from a regular massage because you guys do things differently. I mean, you view the, the body as multidimensional. I mean, you have internal channels, superficial channels. Uh, absolutely. Um, uh, so Tuna is not only mechanical, where we mechanically manipulate soft tissue, muscles, um, joints. He also looks at the flow of the blood and chi. He has a very defined traditional Chinese medicine diagnosis. He uses special herbal topicals, of which some of, uh, we have here. Um, so what is that? Um, this is a, a special medicinal oil. Mm -hmm. He has uh, several herbs in it. Uh, he has a myrrh, frankincense. All our, uh, all those herbs are anti-inflammatory, pain relieving, and they increase circulation, which is very important. So uh, with that, they regulate tissue, muscles, joints, and other structures. Mm -hmm. And so the Twina massage also helps to move the energy. It definitely does. It moves what we call chi or, or omnipotent energy. So in addition of mechanically manipulating a soft tissue and, and, and the joints, it actually moves energy within the blood uh, to augment the health, to treat the conditions. So after all, the Chinese medicine is energetic medicine. It is. I found something interesting. Um, in China, archaeologists studying inscriptions found on bones and tortoise shells used for divination purposes, because divination was huge in the Chinese culture, um, found reference to massage treatment for illness dating back to the Shang Dynasty, 1600 BC. So one of the questions went like this. This was you know, carved on a tortoise shell way back when, thousands of years ago. Can a noble man's abdominal pain be successfully treated um, with massage? Absolutely. What else? Are, what other indications are there? Well, uh, um, most of the uh, treatment that people know and, and, and massage treats is musculoskeletal. It can also treat internal um, organ problems such as uh, digestive issues, um, gynecological problems, circulatory problems, as well as respiratory problems. Okay. And you have a, a host of hand techniques called, is it Shofa? Shofa is a Chinese name for hand techniques that we use in, in Tuina. Um, uh, they used usually on upper and lower body. Um, they resemble therapeutic massage that we have here in Canada, but they go beyond that. They use combination of acupressure, joint uh, movement, and uh, soft tissue manipulation. Wonderful. We have a phone call. Uh, Adriana? Hi. Hi. What's Hello. your question? Um, does Chinese massage work good for kids? That's a great question. Absolutely. One of the most famous branches of Tuina is pediatric massage. Um, in, in Chinese it's called shower, which means a small person massage. It's actually something that children prefer in treatment. They don't like needles and herbs, but they love being touched and massaged. Nice. Okay, why don't you show us some shofa <laughs> Absolutely. Techniques. It's my pleasure. So, uh, for example, when we're treating conditions like a golf elbow or tennis elbow, mm -hmm. in a regular massage, we would usually just massage the local area where it is around the elbow. In Tuina, in addition of compressing the area, we would move the joint, um, stimulating the um, circulation around, uh, gently extending and compressing the area all the way. Um, when we're treating actually the joints, uh, we would uh, relax the joint um, while we uh, s uh, use a harmonic technique that opens the joint itself. So in the case, for example, of carpal tunnel, uh, very much condition that office workers are plugged by, uh, we would use this harmonic technique to open it. We would also follow this by one of these uh, lotion and Chinese medical ointments before and after. So there's a medicinal um, action working on the muscles in addition of using um, uh, Chinese Tuina techniques, such mm -hmm. as this one. This one is called Rou Fa, which means the rolling, and it's not present in the Western massage. How does that feel, Lee? Oh, that's very relaxing. Thank you, Lee. Very relaxing. So these are some of the techniques that uh, Tuina uses, um, combined um, to treat soft tissue bones and the joints mm -hmm. at the same time. And some of the t techniques um, are yin in nature and yang in nature, so some are what reducing and some are stimulating? Absolutely. Some of the techniques Can work. Can you demonstrate either? 
Yes, the, the yin techniques are usually very gentle, very slow, and involve sometimes holding the position for a while, gently repositioning the uh, ligaments, fascia, and, uh, and flow of the chi and blood. Uh, the more vigorous one would look like something, as I mentioned it, like a rofa, uh, cupping, and shaking of the joint. So what they do, they stimulate the blood flow much faster, increasing the local and systemic circulation mm -hmm. and reducing the pain. Mm -hmm. One of the, uh, the techniques that I love when I um, have Twina done on me is when they clap like that and then they start knocking. Yeah. <laughs> can you show that Absolutely. so viewers can see? So, um, so that technique creates the vacuum between the palms yeah. and it's used to uh, gently uh, but firmly work over the larger area. And it really wakes you up. It, it does, <laughs> yet despite the look it doesn't hurt at all. No, it doesn't. It's yeah. quite sedating actually. Yeah. Uh, what I love about uh, Trina, what I yeah. often use is to assess the treatment protocol prior to treating the, the patient on the table. So if I could just demonstrate on Zoran's back, along the, the entire spinal column, there's the different segments of the vertebra. And in between each of the particular segments, mm -hmm. it relates and reflects to a specific organ within the body. So as I'm going along on Zoran's back and the spine in between, there's gonna be specific areas that will be tender for him. Now, when we're going in and we're massaging just circular motions, and any particular area that Zorin will say, oh, that's a little tender to me, you know? What, what, what do you think is going on there? Mm -hmm. So with particular points, it could be in regards to the blood, it could be in regards to the heart, it could be in regards to the liver. So if any area we go run along from the base of the neck all the way down to the tailbone there, I'll just get you to turn back around. And that will give us an idea of where to really focus on the treatment for that particular session. So that's very interesting. So let's say the, the liver um, is at T9. I don't know, is it? Is it at T9? Let's just assume it is. Okay, it was a yeah, great just guess. Under, yes, <laughs> okay. just under the level of So T9. when you press that for the Twina massage um, and it feels mushy, is that the sign then that there's something maybe superficial or internal going on in the liver? So. Again, it would depend on, again, the tongue diagnosis, the pulse, pulse. diagnosis, everything in conjunction. So we're looking at the entire picture, yeah. and then systematically we would treat according to that. In terms of palpating and feeling for the different uh, textures in the skin, that also gives us a, a sign of what is going on internally, externally as well. But we're also looking for feedback from the patient to help delineate where the treatment focus is going to be on as well. Sure, and all those organs on the back are related to the meridians that you're going to, you know, probably Absolutely. needle Absolutely, absolutely, yes. Right? Yes. Yeah, okay. Let's talk about the Wang Di Nei Jing, <laughs> which is the Yellow Emperor's classic, right, of uh, internal medicine. It dates back to 2300 BC. So this is a, a classic text in your field. It's a conversation between the Yellow Emperor and Qi Bo, uh, Q-I, and then Chibo. both. Chibo. Mm -hmm. Um, the Yellow Emperor asked Chibo, how should mild invasion by external evils be needled? Chibo replies, the massage time should be increased and the needling should not be too deep. By bringing Chi to the area of insufficiency, the spirit will recover. First, I just want to comment, like this dialogue thousands of years ago is highly intelligent. It makes me wonder where this civilization came from, but that's a whole other show. My question in regards to this is, what are external evils, and is Twina used today to offset these external evils? Sorry. Absolutely. Um, those external evils will be something we would call today atmospheric factors. So uh, Chinese are very particular, they name them uh, as uh, wind, heat, cold, um, dryness. All these uh, environmental factors can uh, invade our body in the sense of it that, let's say, if we're sweaty and we're outside with not enough clothing on us, um, and it's damp outside, the moisture will be absorbed by the tissue, and in Chinese medical pathology, there will be an issue of uh, moisture and dampness invading the body. So therefore, the treatment would be adjusted to be a longer to promote the sweating and bring the moisture out and therefore uh, deal with the pathogen. Nice. What, quickly, what do you like best about Twina, both of you? <laughs> um, well, it's, it's gentle. Mm -hmm. um, it adapts to the patient. It's a very personalized form of treatment. People appreciate that.
Yeah, it's very relaxing technique and you can feel the difference before and after the session, after the Twina, and they can often tell you, I feel much better. After that, and mm -hmm. people notice there's a difference between Twina and a regular massage? Absolutely, the techniques are very different. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's more, more versatile, right. it deals with more right. modalities. We'll be back more uh, on TCM on Health Matters. Welcome back to Health Matters. We are exploring various aspects of traditional Chinese medicine. I am joined by a doctor of traditional Chinese medicine, Zoran Jelisic, and registered massage therapist who also practices acupuncture, Li Su Hackett. Welcome back. So I want to uh, get into other treatments that you use, and I want to open up this dialogue with um, Dr. Oz. So I was watching his show once. He had three expert on. He had a medical doctor, a uh, lady for representing integrative medicine, and then he had an acupuncturist. He had a woman come up from the audience say she had lower back pain in her lumbar area from working out. So he asked the conventional doctor, what would you do? And he said, well, uh, as an MD, I would do a differential diagnosis, see if it, you know, something was wrong with the muscle spat, with the, with the muscles, or um, maybe there's something wrong with the nerves. So I would send her for an MRI, and then maybe, you know, physiotherapy, anti-inflammatory, and then surgery. And Dr. Rose was like, okay, so let's go to the integrative uh, lady. What would you do? Well, we would do differential diagnosis. Um, then I'd probably send her for chiropractor and give her some botanicals such as valerian to relax the muscles. Then he turned to the acupuncturist and said, what would you do? And he said, well, I would do moxibustion. So he said, Dr. Oz said, well, what is that? So they grabbed a table, the lady lied down on her stomach, and the acupuncturist took a needle, started needling her back, and put these little uh, herbs on top of the needle, and the flames would, uh, the smoke would go into her body. And this is moxibustion. So different forms of uh, treatment. So why don't you explain moxibustion? Absolutely. So moxibustion is a, a herbal uh, treatment, thermal treatment in nature. We uh, we light up the, the moxa, which is Japanese name, by the way. Uh, Chinese name is aie, or we know it here in, um, as a mugwort uh, root. And this is how it looks. So this is actually a wool made out of the herb. And uh, this is usually formed, and uh, it's applied to acupuncture on top of it, where it's lighted up. So what's so special about this? Um, when moxa is lighted um, at the peak of the temperature, it emits particular uh, infra, uh, infrared frequency, which is uh, 2.6 nanometers. Mm -hmm. It seems like our tissue, human tissue, emits the same frequency. So we use moxa to tonify tissue, as we call it in Chinese medicine and acupuncture. Um, we will literally allow body to absorb this thermal uh, frequency and increases the local circulation, reduces the pain, and reduces the inflammation. Um, here we have a, a, a smokeless moxa. Since lots of people are um, not um, in tune with the smoke and, and, and the mm -hmm. odor of the moxa, we use odorless moxa, which is basically this powder that's pulverized. Because explain the smell, what it smells like. Well, um, it, it, it smells like as, as a burned herb. Um, and lots of people find this offensive, so then instead we use this one that doesn't smell, but it has the same application and same frequency. So for example, um, we would light this up, we would bring it to specific acupuncture points, uh, we would keep it about uh, three uh, inches um, away from the skin, uh, move it around the acupuncture point, move it then on next one, next one, so on, or we would just move it um, over the whole area so the body would soak up all this thermal energy. So in turn, this will increase the circulation, reduce the pain, and promote the anti-inflammatory effect. It's a very, very old method, as old as acupuncture. Interesting. I actually found a study, um, and actually Dr. Oz mentioned this, in the Journal of the American Medical Association found that up to 75% of women suffering from breech presentations before childbirth um, had the fetuses rotated as a um, from using uh, moxibustion. I mean, that's huge. It is. 
It is. Um, we use usually a specific point. One of them is uh, bladder 67. Um, Moxa again is brought close to about a couple inches away from the point and we can see mm -hmm. an ultrasound how the fetus is turning. Yeah. Yeah, I know when I've had the moxibustion on my back um, from, from working out myself, I mean, it alleviates, it puts me back together. <laughs> so I really appreciate that. Let's move into the gua sha. So gua sha is instrument assisted uh, friction or scraping type of a therapy. So um, basically uh, what we do is uh, we would apply some of the medicated lotion, which is herbal mm -hmm. in a nature, to uh, suit the skin, improve the circulation, and then we would proceed by actually frictioning the area of the meridian or the area that it's um, um, affected by the uh, condition. And the movements are um, unidirectional, six to eight inches. And um, once we get the redness or petechia or elevated uh, apart, uh, we'll move to the next area. Let's show the photo that we have of the redness on a person's back from um, the gua sha, from the scraping, so viewers at home can get an idea of what you're talking about um, with the redness. So there's the photo right now. And um, a, study in, a study in pain medicine demonstrated that gua sha decreased pain for chronic neck pain sufferers. So um, there's all this research coming out absolutely. for TCM. Um, more and more uh, modalities in Chinese Can medicine are being, um, 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 being researched. So, um, how would I use it? Like, let's say I had a cold or a flu, and I wanted to scrape my lung meridian. Okay. I mean, would I even do that? Uh, you could, as as a self care. You could yeah. also. Um, so, what would you do is you would find the lung meridian that starts from the shoulder and yeah. moves all the way to the big. Uh, the same? Um, yes, and you would just straight down sequentially down oh. six oh, to eight, six to eight <laughs> inches. Of course, I'm gonna take this home with me. <laughs> yeah, <guess>. traditionally, <laughs> what we've done. Uh, Growing up in a Chinese home, it's yeah. anytime you come home with a cold or a flu, you're just feeling under the weather. My mom would take out either, we, we used to use quarters, yeah. not the most comfortable tool to use. Oh, quarters, to porcelain scrape. spoon, and you would go along the, the channels on the back. I'm just going to demonstrate on Zorn sure. if I could just borrow yeah. this. So just along the, uh, either side of the spine here and we would just scrape along, again, preparing it with the oils, the heat, and so forth. You would just scrape sequentially all the way down the spine, uh, up until about halfway down towards the shoulder blade, just to help open up the entire channels of the bladder channel, because this is normally where we would feel a lot of the attack, we call it the wind attack, when you first catch a cold. Everything mm -hmm. gets concentrated in the back of the neck, then the base of the skull going all the way down and that's when we often present with the fevers the chills sure. and and so forth and and a lot of that this will help expel it so by the next day you would actually feel a lot better and this people Thank can you. do this at home absolutely but with caution okay with caution Which, okay so are the contraindications then let's are there any absolutely um, contraindication would be um, open wounds um, mm, yeah. um, systemic infection uh, uh, individual who's run down um, decreased immune system mm -hmm. um, and uh, um, any allergic reaction on the skin itself. Yeah. So in those cases we wouldn't use it. In pregnancy. pregnancy, I'm sure that goes with moxibustion too, Absolutely. right? Absolutely, lower avoid. back and uh, abdominal well, stomach area. Well, unless you're turning the baby for yes. the breech babies. Mm -hmm. um, okay, what about cupping? Okay, so cupping is again another of the instrument assisted uh, suction uh, cupping uh, uh, Submodalities in Chinese medicine. So, in, in this case, we're going to use the, uh, a pressure cupping gun. Um, in old times, we used to use uh, uh, fire cupping, and even today, it's, it's a modern uh, a, this a is, type of a treatment. This is for fire it's, cupping? Yes. So, what would you do with this? Um, we're going to have that demonstrated in a second. Okay. I would like to demonstrate first this one. Sure. So, we would prepare the area with the heating pad and some of these uh, uh, medicated oils which would uh, open the pores, it would bring the blood to the surface. Um, we would usually suction the area that we're gonna treat, which will uh, uh, bring the uh, blood uh, and the muscle tissue up, and, uh, and then we would leave sometimes the cup there to, for uh, 15 to 20 minutes, depending on, on, uh, on indication. And this would be what we call a static cupping. It will be a number of uh, cups um, uh, moved over the back. And when time is right, we would just uh, gently release this. 
which brings us to the rings and, and the bruising. Does the she have a ring? I can't see. Um, she has a little, little bit. Um, and then depending on the color of the bruise, uh, it would be used diagnostically to diagnose how much of stagnation we have in the blood and chi. Oh, for if the blood was purple versus uh, bright red? And then we also have something called moving cupping that uh, yeah. Lee's gonna demonstrate on me uh, in, in terms of the fire cupping. My favorite, favorite technique. <laughs> Anytime you wake up, and, and sometimes I, I end up having to cup myself, and you, you often wake up with a stiff neck and you can't really turn, and it's difficult to drive and look over your blind spot. Mm -hmm. So I quickly go into the treatment room and I'll, I'll start using the fire cupping with the running cupping. So traditionally we would have a, a heating element, whether it's a candle and so forth, and this is soaked in 99% alcohol, and you would uh, allow it to burn with the flame going to insert into the cup and then quickly it's going to attach to the area that's already being prepped with oil and heat and so forth and what I normally like to do is move the cup around the channel and along the channel and just help draw out the specific um, area that is being targeted because most of the time what's happening is the fascia is being stuck or the muscles is very taut and tight and therefore it's not allowed to move so having doing this for a few minutes it gets really red really purple oftentimes it's due to stagnation the cup stays on the particular skin itself as you're dragging it along the skin it's not the most comfortable feeling but very effective treatment mm -hmm. uh, you will often be left with quite a lot of discoloration and most people will think that you, you were in a bar fight of some sort but it often but does it goes go away. away. It often does, I, yes. I was reading in uh, Gwyneth Paltrow, celebrity, uh, back in 2004, she was uh, at a movie premiere in New York and she was wearing a low cut shirt so her back had these circles on it. And um, so it was from the, the cupping. And right. what was interesting about some of the articles is that they said that the cupping is also used for detox. How does that work? It, it, it is because what it does, it brings uh, what we call um, acidotic blood, that it's a deeper inner tissue, it brings it to the surface. And occasionally once uh, we have a first pass when we cup in and skin turns red, then they would do a bit of a bleeding cupping. So they would make a small incision, they would put a cup over it and suction it. Uh, generally about 10 drops of blood, which brings all this uh, toxin full blood. So it's almost like a, um, a bleeding therapy we used to have in, in the Western biomedicine. So it sounds like all these treatments from Twina to gua sha, um, to the cupping really helps to um, not only move the blood and chi, but really bring the blood to the surface of the body and to, I guess, expel the pathogen, is that? Yes, the um, idea is to bring the deeper seated uh, blood with, uh, with the pathogens to the surface so it's dealt better. And uh, that also releases the tension in the muscles, relaxes the person and increase overall wellness. Wow, that was wonderful. Hey, you guys, thank you so much thank for uh, being Incredible. here and educating us and our viewers on traditional Chinese medicine. And um, come back anytime, anytime. I uh, want to leave you with the words by Yeshi Dundin, uh, physician to the Dalai Lama, who said, health is the proper relationship between the microcosm, man and woman, and the macrocosm, the universe. Disease is a disruption of that relationship. In other words, know your healthy place in the cosmos. I'll see you next week. Have a fabulous evening.